Thanks to Star Trek Timelines for sponsoring today's video. Click the link below or scan the QR code for a chance to win one of five of a special USS Enterprise. In 2003, a rocket launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Its destination was Mars, and it was carrying a rover that would achieve the impossible, Spirit. It was not designed to last more than 90 sols, yet it lasted six years. Not designed to survive Martian winters, it endured three. Not designed to survive destructive dust storms, it survived several and not designed to perform mountaineering, yet again, this pioneering rover did it anyway. With obstacles constantly thrown at it, Spirit kept going and explored the surface of Mars on its mission to find evidence of life on the planet or in its past. I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. This series will take you on Spirit's journey both to and on Mars, the trials it faced and the remarkable discoveries it made. In this episode, the first in the series, we will explore Spirit's mission and design, the six minutes of terror it faced, the sights it saw, and the malfunction that almost doomed the rover from the start. Alongside its companion rover, Opportunity, whose journey I have covered in this popular series, Spirit was part of NASA's Exploration Rover mission, an element of the Mars Exploration Program. This program had four science goals. 1. Determine whether life ever arose on Mars. 2. Characterize the climate on Mars. 3. Characterize the geology of Mars. And 4. Prepare for human exploration. Spirit was designed to be a crucial component of achieving these goals, with its main scientific objective being to search for rocks and soil types, then track down clues for any potential past water activity on Mars, a key indicator of life having once been on the planet. As scientists cannot yet go to Mars themselves, robot geologists like Spirit are essential for the success of the Mars exploration program and for the future of human space exploration. To undertake the mission, Spirit's designers armed it with a utility belt of tools. Around 185 kilograms in weight and roughly the dimensions of a golf cart, Spirit was equipped with panoramic and navigation cameras, a miniature thermal emission spectrometer for examining rocks and determining their origins, and two 180-degree HASCAMs for observing the rover's surroundings. Meanwhile, on the rover's arm, there was a Musbauer spectrometer and Alpha Particle X-ray spectrometer for investigations into the mineralogy of rocks and soils, magnets for collecting dust particles, and a microscopic imager for high-resolution, close-proximity images of the planet's surface, and a rock abrasion tool for exposing fresh material for examination by the onboard instruments. These were deployed on the robotic arm to get the instruments as close to the material as possible. Spirit's design also incorporated pieces of the Fallen World Trade Center's metal, which were used to protect cables on the drilling mechanisms. And as for its name, Spirit, initially known as MER2 Rover 2, was named through a student essay competition. The winning entry by nine-year-old Sophie Collis read, I used to live in an orphanage. It was dark and cold and lonely. At night, I looked up at the sparkly sky and felt better. I dreamed I could fly there. In America, I can make all my dreams come true. Thank you for the spirit and the opportunity. Now, with its mission, its design and its name in place, it was time for Spirit to begin its journey. Launching before the Opportunity rover, Spirit took off from Cape Canaveral, Florida on the 10th of June 2003. The spacecraft then went into a parking orbit around Earth as it prepared to embark on its intercept course with Mars. When the time was right, the upper stage of the payload assist module fired and sent the spacecraft into a heliocentric orbit that would lead it to intercept the red planet. But its trajectory wasn't perfect. During its trip through space, Spirit had to course correct four times, 
eventually leading the spacecraft to approach Mars on the 4th of January 2004, after a journey of almost seven months. But the most dangerous part was still ahead of it. To land on Mars, a spacecraft has to go through EDL, Entry, Descent and Landing, a process that takes a spacecraft hurtling through space at incredible speeds and gets it down to zero kilometers per hour on the surface of Mars, using only a heat shield, a parachute, some rockets, and an airbag. It's a process that happens so quickly and is subject to so many variables that scientists refer to it as the six minutes of terror. And with no time to call back to Earth and recalibrate, the computer has to solve any problems it encounters on the fly. This is what happened. Spirit approached the atmosphere of Mars at 19,000 km per hour. 15 minutes before entering the atmosphere, the lander, inside its protective aeroshell, separated from the cruise stage. As Spirit hurtled towards the planet's surface, the heat shield's temperature rose to 1,600 degrees Celsius, while inside the spacecraft remained room temperature. At an altitude of 4 to 5 miles, the spacecraft slowed down to around Mark II and the parachute deployed. 30 seconds later, the aeroshell's bottom heat shield was jettisoned. 10 seconds after that, the rover began to unreel down a tether at a rate of 70 meters per second, all as it raced towards the planet's surface. It was here that the radar began to detect the surface of Mars, and the onboard computer began to determine when the retro rockets would have to fire. At about 5 seconds before the lander smashed into the surface of Mars, the airbags were deployed around it, and, below the parachute, the retro rockets ignited, bringing the lander's speed to zero. The boosters were needed because Mars's atmosphere has less than 1% the density of Earth's, and with that kind of air pressure, a parachute cannot reduce enough velocity on its own. 8.5 meters above the ground, the bridle was cut, and Spirit, complete with its protective airbag covering, fell to the ground at 14 meters per second. This section of the landing was extremely dangerous and vulnerable to chance. If the airbags hit a sharp rock at a wrong angle, the lander would be destroyed. And as it bounced almost 30 times, this was always a possibility. Luckily, no such thing happened, and Spirit rolled to a stop 250 meters from its point of the first impact. Spirit had landed. EDL was complete. The six minutes of terror were over. On January 4th, 2004, Spirit was on Mars. The place where it landed was roughly 12 kilometers away from the planned landing zone, and inside the Gusev crater, a possible former lake inside an enormous impact crater. A natural target considering Spirit's mission. Once the airbag had settled, Spirit deployed and rolled out onto the surface of its new home and started taking panoramic images that would help the scientists at NASA identify potential geological targets. The images were transmitted using Mars Global Surveyor and 2001 Mars Odyssey two spacecraft which were orbiting above the surface of Mars. These were the images that Spirit took. The first of these images was the highest resolution color image taken on another planet. This was compiled using four PanCam images high and three wide, creating a full-size image of 4000 by 3000 pixels. These individual images were taken in black and white, with 13 filter wheels allowing images to be produced in different wavelengths. Back on Earth, these same images were then combined to create the color image you're looking at now, that gives you a view of what it would look like to stand on the red planet. Take a look at what you see. Note the abundance of rocks and the rolling surface in the distance, features that the rover could explore. These are Anderson Hill, Brown Hill, Charla Hill, Clark Hill, Husband Hill, McCool Hill, and Raymond Hill. One area, a circular depression that came to be known as Sleepy Hollow, was a target for the lander due to its ability to provide insight into the interior of Mars. 
The landing site, surrounded by the aforementioned hills and geologic material, came to be known as Columbia Memorial Station, a name given in honor of the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster where seven astronauts lost their lives. Spirit immediately began busying itself by exploring Sleep Hollow Crater, an area 9 meters wide and only 12 meters from the lander. However, it wasn't long before something threatened to derail the mission altogether. On the 21st of January 2004, or Sol 17, NASA's Deep Space Network abruptly lost all comms with Spirit. The team at NASA was perplexed. The following day, they received a beep through the network, which meant one thing, Spirit was receiving transmissions, but had determined that it was in a fault mode and would only respond to commands sporadically. This was a serious anomaly, but if it was a software issue or memory corruption instead of a hardware issue, it was fixable. Ordering Spirit to transmit engineering data, the team discovered that an error in the rover's sleep mode had caused it to waste battery and overheat issues that could destroy Spirit if they were not rapidly fixed. This was further complicated when, on Sol 20, Spirit ignored the command, shut down, damn it, until from the team, which attempted to cause it to suspend operations. Time was running out. One theory about the rover's issue was that it was stuck in a perpetual reboot loop. Spirit was designed to reboot if it detected a fault, but if that fault occurred during its reboot process, then the rover would reboot forever. Determining that the error was in the flash memory, the team used a design feature that allowed the rover to boot without utilizing the flash memory, which successfully broke the reboot cycle. Alongside this, they discovered that there were too many files on Spirit's file system, which was causing issues with Spirit's operations. Luckily, most of these files were unneeded in-flight data and could be deleted, which they promptly did. They even reformatted the entire flash memory system. The result? On the 6th of February, Sol 32, Spirit was back online and free to explore the surface of Mars. But although it had already traveled across space, through the atmosphere of Mars, and survived the landing and a critical malfunction, its adventure was only just beginning. Join us next time as Spirit explores more of the Red Planet, grinding its first rock, exploring craters, and venturing into the Columbia Hills. The exploration of space is simply intriguing, which is why shows like Star Trek have captured the imagination of viewers for generations. I'm quite a fan of the show, and have been hooked on the mobile game Star Trek Timelines. You basically take the role of a captain, and you can pick your crew from pretty much anyone in the Star Trek universe. It's got quite a compelling storyline, it's well written with an interesting premise, with a lot of the Star Trek lore. For me though, I especially enjoy the puzzle solving element of getting the right crew to complete missions, and then level them up and equip them for harder later missions. If you want to try it for yourself for free, click the link below or scan the QR code as this week they are running a challenge that awards 5 models of a rare USS Enterprise to 5 new game users that will reach and unlock the Captain Level 5 by the 3rd of August. So why not check it out? Thanks for watching. If you found value in the video and want to help support the channel, please consider liking and subscribing or even becoming a patron or a member. If that's something you would be interested in, click the links below. All the best and see you next time.